So the person who gets out of, and, and this is what happens a lot, that the alcoholic or the sober person now that went to treatment or went and got better, when they're in treatment, you know, there's bits of truth, right? To how this relationship is duly fucked up. I mean, let's just be real, right? It, it is, it's duly fucked up. We want to say that all of their, all of our problems in the relationships are because of their drinking or using, but it's also our participation and that issue, how we go up in it, what we do to navigate it, which also becomes the issue. So they might say to you, well, before one of the reasons I drank so much, which is not true. What they'll say is one of the reasons I drank so much is because you wouldn't be intimate with me, right? Because you're frigid, you're cold. We have all these intimacy issues and you say rightfully so, well, I have these intimacy issues because you're an alcoholic. So now it's like the chicken or the egg here, right? The truth is you both have intimacy issues. Now I know that's going to be hard to hear, but the truth is when you're with a partner who cannot be intimate with you because they're kind of checked out, you also chose that person for a reason because of your own intimacy issues. So now you're both like sober, naked, metaphorically and physically, emotionally, psychologically, and it could be very uncomfortable for both of you. And then that person says, well, I got sober and then you still won't have sex with me. What's the point of this? Why did I even get sober? You still don't wanna be intimate with me. Well, the truth is fostering intimacy is a journey. Many times when I work with couples, I say, okay, we're, intimacy needs to be restored. That's been damaged in this dynamic, you know? Okay, and the dark side of sobriety is, well, now we're, we're sober, but there's still no intimacy. There's nothing happening here. What's going on? And I say, well, define intimacy. And they say, well, I wanna have sex. Well, okay, well, sex is not necessarily intimacy. It's a form of being intimate with somebody, but it's certainly not intimacy. Intimacy, remember that old, <laughs> stupid movie about a guru that was like a, you know, the guy from Saturday Night Live did this guru thing. And he was like, uh, he does all the characters. He did Shrek's voice and he did this, this uh, movie about intimacy. And he would go around saying intimacy into me, I see. And it was like the, meant to be the cheesiest thing in the world into me, I see. And it was the cheesiest thing in the world, but also probably the one of most accurate things that intimacy really is into me i see and i let you in on it and so it's not just sex it's not just the body it's not just that it's not access to that intimacy is here's what i'm really thinking here's what i'm really feeling here's what's really going on with me and when you are in an addicted to toxic dynamic or even you grew up that way, or you're, it's still that way, sharing truth is dangerous for you. You've learned how to keep it on lock. You've learned how to shut it down, withhold, keep your feelings to yourself, not share what you're thinking, uh, not from yourself even. Keeping your deepest desires hidden from yourself, your deepest fears hidden from yourself. And so sobriety is a process of not just unearthing that information, for your partner, it's unearthing it for yourself so that you can share it. And so, so much of the couples work that I do is I will have a couple come into session and we just share, we share our intimate details of our lives, of things that have happened to us and what we made those things mean and how we've interpreted things. Not, it's, it's a very different approach to building intimacy and rebuilding trust in a couple. It's not just rehashing what happened and you're never going to do it again. Or thank God, you know, well, I'm sober now. So every time you bring that up, you're triggering me and, you know, nobody goes anywhere. So the dark side of sobriety is intimacy and the road home, home to intimacy is a freaking long, windy road. Or another dark side of sobriety is somebody comes out of recovery there was no intimacy at all before. Now they're sober. And now the new addiction is sex addiction. The new addiction is now we have to have sex all the time because if I don't have sex at least every day, I'm going to use drugs or alcohol. I mean, I know this sounds really crazy, but I know people that are this way. I've worked with people that have gotten out of treatment and said, well, I got to get my, now I have all this dopamine deficiency and your body and your whole is the receptacle. I, need, I know this is so gross, but this is how it feels to another human being is that 
I just got out of recovery and I'm sober now. And you're the receptacle that I'm going to hook into and get my happiness from. So if that means I'm going to do it when you're naked, I'm going to plug into you and have sex with you. I'm going to try to get a rise out of you. And people use other people as a way to get high in sobriety. So you have to also know when that's going on. And be able to say, well, yeah, I, you know, and now I want to be intimate with them, but now they want it every day. And now you get into that trap. If I'm not intimate with them every day or loving them or telling them how great they are, or stroking their ego or stroking other body parts, then now they're going to relapse. And all this fear comes in around managing how much intimacy you're outputting at the sake of another human being and at the sacrifice of yourself. And that is terribly unhealthy, terribly, terribly unhealthy. Right. So I think I've beaten that drum. Okay. Did I drive this point home to you? Intimacy is just one of the dark sides of sobriety. Another dark side of sobriety is repressed anger. 